Of course, we're here to talk about the only topic in town right now regarding right. Liverpool Football Club, and indeed football in general, it appears. Um, and it's Saudi Arabia and their ever-increasing involvement and ever-increasing footprint on the world of sport, I think it's fair to say. Um, first and foremost, before we go into sort of the finer details of of the Henderson stuff, the Gerrard stuff as well, stuff that you've covered extensively for, for a while now, have you been... You've covered this part of the world for a long time. Have you been surprised by what they're doing this summer in the Saudi Pro League? Or given the fact that they're getting stronger in golf, they're getting stronger in boxing, should we have anticipated this potentially? Yeah, well, I think it's more it's more shocking than surprising, I think, just because of the sheer numbers and, and all the deals that are being done and being talked about. I think it hasn't come out of nowhere. I think part of it comes from Saudi Arabia, saw what Qatar did with the World Cup. I think, oh, we want some of that. Um, I think part of it stems from that. And, yeah, there are long-term plans in the country to what they have, uh, this policy called Vision 2030, which is to um, diversify the economy that has been reliant on oil for a long, long time. And there's a realisation that it won't be around forever. And other countries are trying to kind of wean themselves off oil anyway. So they need others, other um, to build other industries and sports is uh, one of those big industries they're looking at. And, of course, football is the biggest of all. And that's, So I think it's part of a long-term strategy. But, yeah, I mean, but this uh, kind of sudden spending all happening at once, you know, it is kind of uh, does get the head spinning a little bit. But once Ronaldo came in, you know, in January, then this summer is always going to see, I think, some activity as other big teams and rivals of and Nasir try to catch up. But, yeah, the scale of it is, you know, is a bit crazy. Yeah, it certainly is. Yeah, it certainly caught me off guard. And by the looks of it, a lot of the Premier League off guards in many senses as well. I mean, I know from a Liverpool point of view, sort of jumping ahead slightly, we weren't expecting sort of offers to come for our captain and one of our key midfielders just all of a sudden, seemingly out of the blue. So, yeah, it is a bit of a shock. Um, like I say, you've covered what's been going on over there in the Saudi Pro League pretty extensively, really. From from a Liverpool perspective, obviously, we've seen Roberto Firmino head out there, free transfer. <laughs> Steven Gerrard has recently also joined the club Al Atafak that are trying to sign John Henson, of course, after what was a pretty dramatic U-turn. So before we come on to Henderson, I wanted to touch on the Gerrard thing. Again, you did a report for The Guardian on this. Were you, I suppose, were you taken aback by his U-turn on this, really? And also, just on the football club that he's joined, where are they at in terms of their stature in Saudi football? Because they're not one of the four clubs owned by PIF, are they? So as a football club, as an entity, where are they? Well, they will be seen as kind of mid-table, mid-ranking uh, Saudi league club. I don't know, maybe not too dissimilar from perhaps and be a bit harsh with Aston Villa, maybe not quite as big as Aston Villa in that sense. That maybe not a good comparison, actually. Um, but they're from the east. There's a, either in the base in the east of the country in a city called Daman, which, of course, isn't that famous internationally, but it's one of, a bit of a football, it is a, a region known for its love of football. And Saudi Arabia will host the 2027 Asian Cup which is the biggest tournament in Asian football. And that is, um, Daman is one of the three whole cities, along with Riyadh and Jeddah. So it's quite a sizable place. And it does, have, it does have some football heritage. I mean, Etifak have been up and down in recent years. Um, and yeah, so that makes uh, the capture of the, the signing of Jero quite interesting, partly because you know, if, if you look back at the 70s and the 80s in the Middle East, there are quite a lot of English managers around. But that's all gone by the by these days. It's Especially in places like Saudi Arabia, you get lots of uh, Romanians, Croatians, Serbians. These days, lots of Portuguese. So it's interesting as well to see English managers come back into the country. Yeah, one hundred percent, it is, and certainly one of Steven Gerrard's stature. Right. Although his managerial career hasn't really taken off. I mean, Rangers fans would argue that to the hilt, of course. But when his Aston Villa time didn't really go to plan, and now he's headed out there, you do wonder sort of where his stock is at, I guess, in many senses, because you see these footballers, some of them, not all of them, but some of them at sort of the tail end of their careers, and Jordan Henson might just fit into that category as well. And you kind of understand it, certainly when you see some of the figures. But when there's like a young up-and-coming coach and somebody like Gerard who always felt as though he was destined for the Liverpool job at some point, to take this decision at this point in your career feels quite strange to me. Um, just on El Atifak a little bit further then, because obviously they're the ones heavily linked with Jordan Henderson, sort of a reunion between Gerard and Henderson there too. 
potentially former Liverpool captains, of course. They, like I say, they're not one of the PIF own clubs. So, in terms of what they're trying to do here, because it's interesting, I read, I think it was in your piece, actually, John, about the, the royal family have encouraged the pro league to start spending more lavishly across the board, really. So, are they trying to sort of re-establish themselves in a foothold and a bit of a hotbed for football by these captures? Is that what this is all about for them in terms of trying to get Henderson? They've already got Gerrard. Yeah, I think Joe is interesting because you mentioned his stature and um, you know, he's a legend in Liverpool and he's a very famous person around the world. I mean, my wife isn't British and she's not interested in football, but she knows who Stephen Gerrard is. And um, and I think if you look at it from a Saudi Arabian point of view, hiring Stephen Gerrard immediately puts his team you know, in, in the international headlines. And also if you think about the English media will follow it much more closely. And internationally, what the English media does say in football is very closely followed around the world as well. I mean, even I've lived in different Asian countries and most Asian media in those countries get their international news from the English and the UK media. So I think from the kind of profile point of view, it's kind of a perfect signing in, in that regard, regardless of how good a manager Stephen Gerrard is, because he just brings so many eyes and, and so many, so many articles were written. There's going to be English journalists going to see see games, going to see Etifat play, which I think has never happened before. Um, so, I mean, there may be more kind of experienced and successful managers in the league a bit lower down, like I said, the Serbians, the Portuguese and Croatians, but they don't have the international profile of Gerard. I think that must be, uh, I assume, a big part of getting him in because... Um, he just brings, you know, lots of eyes to that part of Saudi Arabia, and now we're having this conversation, of course, about you know a team that I think until recently lots of people haven't even heard of, and that that's what is that's what this, this uh, signing has done, and I think, and that's the first part. But yes, as you mentioned, the second part is to see how he's going to get on and uh, what will it do for his career. if he, if he is successful, will that help his you know long term career or will it just be shrugged off? But if he isn't successful, again, what does that mean as well? And um, yeah, so he's fascinating from that point of view, but I'm sure he must have thought about these things before he took the job. But yeah, it's going to be very difficult, I think, for him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it is an interesting one. It's hard to know sort of where his career lies, regardless of which way it goes, really. Because like you say, it would be easy for the press and the, and the public in many senses to sort of brush off whatever success he does end up having, if he does. It's just like, oh yeah, but it was only the Saudi Pro League, like regardless, you know. So on the Henderson one then, John, you mentioned sort of profile and pulling power there and sort of getting eyes on Etifak and getting eyes on the league indeed. Jordan Henderson signing a club to turn up at Liverpool and sign such a revered, you know, renowned, such a successful captain of Liverpool Football Club. That's a statement in itself, isn't it? And that that further shows the pulling power of the project, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, I, I would assume that a lot of the Henderson interest comes from Gerard himself. I mean, in that sense, it, it, it makes perfect sense because he's going to, you know, his place in eastern Saudi Arabia and the culture on and off the pitch is completely different. And it's going to take a lot of getting used to. Um, and some very successful and famous coaches have had real problems with it in the past, and also players too. So I think bringing in somebody you know who's English um, and you can trust who's a mature player as well, I think will help him just to adjust to life in Saudi Arabia. They, they can help each other. Um, so I'd imagine it's Gerard making the move. But yeah, again, Henderson is a is a worldwide you know figure. People watch him week in, week out, play in the Premier League for one, you know, one of the biggest clubs in the world. So, yeah, to take a player from who's playing in the Premier League for such a big team and then bring him to, you know, Etifite, again, is, is a big statement. Um, you know, I mean, maybe Henderson isn't the most glamorous or exciting of players in terms of talent and ability, but, you know, maybe he can. he's a leader and, uh, again, he's a big figure, so he could make a difference. <laughs> 